Hello, this is Mr. Priscilla, and we're continuing our discussion of uh, linear programming and using the simplex method to solve standard maximum problems. We're going to uh, work through some of the homework problems here, and we're going to set up some, or continue, well, set up some word problems involving uh, linear programming. And first problem, just sort of walking you through the steps of the simplex method for solving standard maximum problems. It says introduce slight variables and then write the initial simplex tableau for the given linear programming problem. Well, a simplex, I mean a uh, standard maximum simplex problem, you introduce one slight variable for every less than or equal to inequality. So there's one, two, it's going to be three slight variables. I'll call them S subscript one, S subscript two, S subscript three. And when you're setting up the simplex method, then all of these variables should be over here with the z. We want them all lined up in this form. x1, x2, x3, then the slack variables, s1, s2, s3, and then z. Vertical line will be the equals constant. We're rewriting each one of these inequalities as an equation. So we have 1x1 plus 2x2 plus 3x3 plus 1s1. There's no s2, s3, z, or 12. That's the first inequality written as an equation using a slight variable. The second one. 6x1 plus 1x2 plus 6x3. There's no S1, but there's an S2. No S3, Z equals 8. And then the third one. I'm writing this third inequality as an equation. 4x1 plus no S, uh, X2 plus 2x3. There's not an S1 or an S2, but there is an S3. There's not a z equals 7. Draw a horizontal line and put the objective function now. Now remember, the objective function, we're writing with all the x's over on the same side with the z. So that's changing the signs of each one of these coefficients. Moving this x1 over here, there'd be a negative 1x1 negative 7x2, negative 6x3. There are no slight variables in that, but there is a z, and if we move everything over, equals zero. So that's how you set up the initial simplex tableau. At this point, I'm assuming I've already done some videos where I work all the way through uh, doing these and also there's one video where I'm just setting up the uh, simplex tableau so this isn't your first time of seeing me do that so there's problem number one most of the numbers are already written in here all you do is set fill in negative one negative seven negative six and you'll notice the rest of our matrix has the same numbers they have here now, what's next? Well, the next thing says, oh, you're given a simplex tableau, and it says, okay, find the pivot. Do I remember how to find the pivot? Well, to find the pivot, you're going to choose the most negative number on the bottom row, because that's the variable that will have the biggest impact. So that's going to give you this, uh, the pivot column. So the most negative number on the bottom row, right here, there's the pivot column. Now divide the last number by the corresponding entry in that pivot column. So 15 over 4 and 16 over 1. 
16 over 1 is 16. 15 over 4 well, is uh, 3 and 3 fourths. From these numbers, you choose the smallest positive quotient. So let me move this up a little so those of you in the back can see. Well, the smallest positive quotient is 15 over 4. That would be what? Uh, 3 and 3 fourths or 3.75, certainly smaller than 16. So here's the pivot row. The intersection is the pivot. Right there, the 4. So the pivot is 4. And it's in row, remember rows are horizontal, columns are vertical. So that 4 is in row 1, column 1, 2, column 3. And just to make sure you get the hang of it, problem number 3 is another. Find the pivot you choose the most negative number in the bottom row, so that would be the negative 4 again. If there were no negative numbers down there, then that means you're finished. The, the maximum's already been found. And then you divide. 19 over 1, 19. 18 over 2, 9. 12 over 1, 12. Well, the smallest positive quotient is 9, so here's the pivot row, which means the pivot is this number 2, which is located in 1, 2. Row 2, column 1, 2, 3. So they were finding the, setting up the simplex tableau. Well, the simplex matrix, that's the word I usually use rather than tableau. And then find the pivot. Now, the pivot is the number that you would make into a 1 and then zero out the column. So let's see what's next on here. Oh. Problem number 4. Here, I'll just take that off. So now, what variables are the basic variables? And what are the non-basic variables? The basic variables have a single one and all the rest zeros. Single one and all the rest zeros. When you look at each one of these columns, like x2, that's a basic variable. Oh, can you see that back there? If there's just a single one and all the rest is zeros, basic variable. Mm, what else are the basic variables? S3 and Z. A basic variable has just one one and all the rest is zeros. So the basic variables are x2, x3, s3, and z. Is that this one here? The non-basic variables are all the others, the ones that aren't the basic variables. So x1, s1, s2, those are the non-basic variables. So X1, S1, and S2. Now, to write the solution, ooh, to write out the solutions, you're going to set all the non-basic to zero. Set the non-basic variables to zero. So x1 is zero, s1 is zero, and s2 is zero. Oh, I'm running out of room. 
Ooh, that's sort of hard to read there. These are zeros. You set the non-basic variables to zero. To get the solutions for the basic variables, if all of these, the non-basics now zero, so to get the solutions for the basic variables, you're ignoring the non-basic now. Just take each basic variable, scan down till you see a 1, and then look all the way over. So, x2 is 23. Y'all see how I did that? Help me find x3. Scan down till you find a 1, and look all the way over. So, x3 is 24. What about s3? Does someone want to help me with s3? S3 is 12, and Z is 28. Oh, there. So, let's see. I lift it up. A, if I do a physical zoom. Okay. Any questions on how I calculated these basic variables? You set the non-basic variables to zero, and then for the basic variables, you just look and say, okay, look down the column, find the one, scan over to the last column. Now we need to decide whether this is a maximum solution. Well, do we need to pivot again or are we finished? Well, to decide if you need to pivot again, you look and see if there's any negative numbers on the last row. Remember how we were finding those pivots. You choose the most negative number on the bottom row and then divide. If there are no negative numbers on the bottom row, you are finished and have found the maximum. And we have. Okay, there are no negative numbers on the bottom row, so... The maximum solution has been found. Okay. Now, make it bigger again. I'm going to do one all the way through by hand. Mm -hmm. Says, use the simplex method to solve this linear programming problem. So I'm going to do this problem by hand. And here we are to get started. Let's write out the simplex tableau. Oops. Oops. Right. Y'all caught up with me? I'm trying to position this. There. Okay, to write the simplex tableau. There's one slack variable for every less than or equal to. So I'll say plus s1 and plus s2. Now the first, any, there's x1, x2, x3, there's two S's and a Z. So this first one here. One, four, six, S1. There's no S2 or Z equals 117. Now, second inequality. There's an X1. 4x2, 8x3. There's not an S1, but there's an S2. No Z. 245. Now the objective function. You move all of these X's over here with the Z. Can y'all imagine doing that? That would give you a negative 9x1. A negative 2x2. A negative 1x3, 
There's no S's, but there is a Z equals zero. So that's setting it up. Probably this is the last time I'm going to do, do one all the way through on uh, using the this uh, simplex method. Once we start doing the word problems, I'm just setting them up and then punching them into the website phpsimplex.com to actually go through and do all this manipulation. Okay, that'll save us a little bit of effort with uh, number crunching. But uh, right now, okay, do I remember how to find the pivot? Choose the most negative number in the bottom row, that would be negative 9, and then you're going to divide. 117 divided by 1 is just 117. 245 divided by 1 is 245. So this smallest positive quotient, here's the pivot column, here's the pivot row, so this circled pivot is going to be a, uh, the, the circled one I mean, is going to be the pivot. Theoretically that's the one you need to turn into a one, but it's already a one. Okay? So we're going to make the purple 1 and the negative 9 into a 0. The way you do that is by adding the row you want the 0 to a multiple of the pivot row. For this one, in order to get a 0 right here, the circled 1 would be need to be negative 1. I'm going to say negative 1 times row 1 plus row 2 equals a new row 2. That'll get me a 0 right there. If this thing were a negative 1, negative 1 plus 1 is 0. Now what about for this negative 9 is? It might be easier to see the pattern now. What would I need to multiply this row 1 by in order to get a 0 when I add it? Well, a positive 9. Positive 9 times row 1 plus row 3 equals a new row 3. So this first row 1 stays for, as it is. 1, 4, 6, 1, 0, 0, 1, 17. Now I'm getting a 0 here. Negative 1 times 1 plus 1, 0. Negative 4 plus 4, 0. Negative 6 plus 8, 2. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1 plus 0, negative 1. Negative 1 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. Negative 1 times 0 is 0, plus 0 is 0. Negative 1 times 117 is negative 117 plus 245. Well, what's 245 minus 117? Is that going to be a 128? Okay, so now 9 times 1 is 9 minus 9 is 0. 9 times 4 is 36, minus 2, 34. Are y'all caught up with me? Are y'all doing these steps as I go? 9 times 6 is 54, my, <coughs> oh, my, pardon me, minus 1 is 53. 9 times 1 is 0, excuse me, 9 times 1 is 9, plus 0 is 9. 9 times 0 is 0, plus 0 is 0. Wait a minute, right here, where did I get a 1 there? Negative 1 times uh, zero, 0 plus 1, that should be a 1 right there. Right there should be a 1. And let's see. 
9 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. 9 times 117, uh, let's see, is that going to be a 1053? 9 times 117 is 1053, plus 0 is 1053. Now once we've zeroed out that column, you look and see, are you finished? Are there any negative numbers in the bottom row here? Any of these indicators negative? If they are, then you've got to repeat. If not, you're finished. I believe this problem will always wind up with just one cycle. That's what it's called. So we are finished. So to get the solutions, Remember, there's basic variables and then there's non-basic variables. The basic variables have a single one and all the rest zeros. Remember, this is a one right there. Let me see. What if I do that? Is that better? The non-basic variables have something other than just a single one and all the rest zeros. The non-basic variables, you're going to set to zero. The basic variables, you scan down till you find the 1 and then look all the way over. So x1 is 117, x2 is 0, x3 is 0, s1 is 0. What about s2? What's s2? Did y'all hear that? 128? And then z is... 1053. So let's see, how do they want to, what do they want? Okay. Oh, we fill in. The maximum is 1053 when x1 is, x1, oh, x1 is 117, x2 is 0, x3 is 0, then they tell you s1 is 0 and s2 is 128. Since we got those numbers right, we feel real confident that our answers are right, don't we? Okay. Any questions there? Now, going to do some application problems and in these let's see let's see here's one so we're setting up some word problems now this is a long one now for the rest of the problems in this assignment all these word problems we're just going to be I'm going to just be setting them up. I'm not going to be doing all this stuff by hand. I'm going to go to this website that I've shown you in another video, uh, phpsimplex.com, or just do any sort of Google search, any sort of, well, any sort of search. And there's a lot of different uh, websites that help with the simplex method. The one I like to use is PHP Simplex. Oh, number six. Oh, wow. Can y'all see all of this? There's a lot of words here. A cat breeder has the following amounts of food. 110 units of tuna, liver, chicken. To raise a Siamese cat, the breeder must use two units of tuna, two liver, three chicken. While raising a Persian requires the same amount of tuna, but less liver and less chicken. A Siamese cat sells for $15, a Persian cat for $16. How many of each should be raised in order to obtain maximum gross income? Let X1 be the number of Siamese cats. So I'm here setting it up. X1 is the number of Siamese cats. And X2 the number of Persian cats. And they're going to, let's just go ahead and make our little setup table. We're talking about 
the amount of tuna, liver, chicken. The first thing we're given are sort of the totals. 110 units of tuna, 100 units of liver, 60 units of chicken. To raise a Siamese, it takes 2 units of tuna, 2 of liver, 3 of chicken. For raising a Persian requires 2, 1, 1. And the cat can sell for $15, $16. How many of each should be raised in order to obtain maximum gross income? So what we want to maximize is the amount of money they're taking in, which would be $15 for every Siamese and $16 for every Persian. And then we have three constraints. The tuna constraint, two units of tuna for every Siamese plus two units of tuna for every Persian. Now, since they only have 110 units of tuna, the symbol that goes here is less than or equal. They can't use more than 110 units of tuna. That's all they have. The liver constraint, I'll write it in blue, 2x1 plus 1x2 is less than or equal to 100. And the chicken constraint, 3x1 plus 1x2 less than or equal to 60. Of course, that 1 isn't uh, critical if you didn't write it. it and then we, of course, have the non-negativity constraints. It wouldn't make sense for x1 and x2 to have a negative number of uh, cats. Let's see what they're asking us to do here. What is the tuna constraint? Well, that one was this one. The 2x1 plus 2x2 less than or equal to 110. The liver constraint, that was the second one I wrote. 2x1 plus x2 is less than or equal to 100. The chicken constraint is 3x1 plus 1x2 less than or equal to 60. Now they want us to add the slack variables and write the matrix. And notice, since the z column, have y'all noticed that? The Z column never changes. Look at this. It says 0, 0, 1. And on all the ones that I've done by hand, hopefully you've noticed, the Z column never changes. So it gets to a point where people say, okay, let's not bother writing the Z column. So they're just writing the X1, X2, X3. See the way it's going to be. So they already have most of it filled in if you look at your problem there. But I'm going to go ahead and write it all out. Then there's two slight, there's, wait, how many slight variables? There should be three. One slight variable for every less than or equal to. And I like to write the Z column, but they're not doing it on this one. So, okay. So this first one, the tuna constraint, would be 2, 2, 1. Now, where did I get this x3? There is no x3. 2, 2, s1, no s2, no s3, 1, 10. 2, 1, no s1, there's an s2, no s3, 100. 3, 1, no S1, no S2, and S3, 60. And now the objective fun uh, function, you move all this stuff over. Negative 15, negative 16, no S's, and we're not going to bother writing the Z. 
equal to zero. So let's compare my matrix and what they have there. Hmm. Okay, so there's the first one. The second row, nothing's missing. The third row, three, one, zero, zero. There should be a one right here. And then a negative 15 in the first box. A negative 16 in the second. And that's it for that problem. If you actually needed an answer, I wouldn't do this by hand. I'd go and find, do, use PHP Simplex or any website that helps with the uh, Simplex method. Let's see. Number seven. A biologist has. 500 kilograms of nutrient A, 700 kilograms of nutrient B, and 300 kilograms of nutrient C. These nutrients will be used to make four types of food whose content in percent per kilogram of food and whose growth values are shown on the right. growth values. Set up the initial, oh, can you see that? Set up the initial simplex tableau that would be used to determine how many kilograms of each food should be purchased in order to maximize total growth. Let X1 be the number of kilograms of food type P. X2 the number of kilograms of food type Q. Ooh, can you all see what I'm writing there? X3 is the number of kilograms of food type 3. And X4 is the number of kilograms of food type 4. Okay. We want to maximize total growth. So we want to maximize this growth value. So you would set it up by saying maximize z equals or whatever letter you want. Well, how would you calculate or the growth value? If it's 100 for every kilogram of food top 1, it would be 100x1 plus 80x2 plus 70x3 plus 60x4. So you would fill that in there. And then we have con some constraints. A biologist has 500 kilograms of nutrient A. So that's like the total here, 500. but just because they have 500 doesn't mean they got to use all 500. Significant thing is they can't use more than 500. They only have 700 kilograms of nutrient B, 300 kilograms of nutrient C, These nutrients will be used to make four types of food. PQRS. Those are the four types of food whose contents in percent per kilogram. You see these numbers out here for it says ABC, those are percents. So to write the inequalities, like this first one. You're going to have to be converting those numbers to these numbers over here to percent. 0 times x1 plus 0 times x2 plus that 12.5 percent you write as 0.125x3 plus 0.375x4 less than or equal to 500. 
second one, you do the same thing. 0x1 plus 0.5x2, or 0 0.50. 0 0.5 and 0.50 are the same. Plus 0.5x3 plus 0.625. Notice how I'm moving that decimal point to the left two places to write the percent as a decimal. 100x1, so that's 1x1, 100% I mean, plus 0.5x2 plus 0.375x3 plus 0x4 less than or equal to 300. So we're now going to set all of this up into the simplex matrix. Use one slack variable for every less than or equal to. So you see, just like on the previous one, they're not writing the Z's. So let's see. This first row, 0, 0, 0.125. For x3, it's the 0.375. There's an S1, but no S2 or S3 equals 500. Now I use this second row, 0, 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.65. There's no S1, there's an S2, there's no S3. The number that goes right here is 700. Oh, by the way, these numbers go over here. 100x1, 80x2, 70x3. Ooh, these 60x4, I didn't write them in the box, but these are the ones that go right there. Okay, are we ready for the third constraint? 1x1, 0.5x2, 0.375x3. No X4. There's not an S1 or an S2. There is an S3. Less than or equal to 300. And now for the objective function. Remember you move all this stuff over here. So that's going to give you a negative 100. A negative 80. A negative 70, which it's already filled in, and a negative 60. So, any questions on that? How we set this up? Numbers 8. Chayenta is raising money for the homeless and discovers that each church group requires two hours of letter writing and one hour of follow-up calls, while each labor union needs two hours of letter writing and three hours of follow-up. She can raise $125 from each church group and $250 from each union. She has a maximum of 12 hours for letter writing and 16 hours of follow-up available each month. Determine the most profitable mixture of groups she, would con she should contact and the most money she could raise in a month. All I'm going to do is set this one up and I'll leave it up to you to punch it into PHP Simplex. Watch one of the videos about punching it into PHP Simplex. If that's the one you want to use, it's up to you. You can do a search and find any sort of uh, um, simplex method solver online. Okay, so what we need to know on this one is how many church groups and labor unions she should be contacting. Okay, so let's let X1 be the number of churches. 
I'm just choosing churches first because that was the one that was mentioned first. And X2 is the number of labor unions. So she's calling these people, asking them to donate for the homeless. Letter writing and follow-up. She discovers that each church group requires two hours of letter writing and one hour of follow-up, while each labor union needs two hours of letter writing and three hours of follow-up. She can raise $125 from each church. And you see it takes more time with the labor union, but she can get $250 more, I mean $250 from each union. She has a maximum of 12 hours for letter writing and 16 hours for follow-up. So what's the most profitable mi mixture? Well. This is a maximization problem. We'll say maximize Z equals, she's getting $125 for every church group and $250 for every labor union. Subject to, well, there's a couple of constraints here. What are those constraints? Well, we have the letter writing constraint. Two hours for every church, two hours for every labor union. All she has is 12 hours, so less than or equal to 12. That's the letter writing constraint. And then the follow-up constraint. X1 plus 3X2 less than or equal to 16. Now we have the non-negativity constraints. It wouldn't make sense for the number of churches or the number of labor unions to be negative. So I would go to PHP Simplex, plug this in, or if you want to do it by hand, I can't imagine why you want to, but plug it in and it'll give you the solution. How much money she'll get in donations and how many of each of these groups she should contact. So all I'm doing is just setting these up. That was number eight. Let's see. What's the next one? Three of these I've already done in a separate video. Nine, ten, and twelve. So let's do number eleven now. I skipped nine and ten because there's separate videos of me doing these. I have a separate video where I'm just setting up some word problems. The fashion store has $6,000 available each month for advertising. Newspaper ads cost $200 a piece, and no more than 10 can be run per month. Radio ads cost $100 each, and no more than 20 can run each month. TV ads cost $800 a piece, with a maximum of 7 available each month. Approximately 100, I mean 100,000. 1,000 women will see each newspaper ad, 800 will hear each radio ad, and 15,000 will see each TV ad. How much of each type of advertising should be used if the store wants to maximize exposure? So it wants to know how many newspaper ads, radio ads, and TV ads should be used, and then what's the um, maximum exposure how many women will see that you want the most women possible to see these ads okay so we'll let x1 be the number of newspaper ads x2 the number of what was the next thing it asked for radio and x3 the number of tv ads Let's see, newspaper ads cost $200, and then there's this restriction, no more than 10 can be run. No more than 10 means 10 or fewer, so I'm just going to write less than or equal to 10. 
This is a separate constraint. It's not going to be a total. We're not going to actually be totaling anything. Radio ads cost $100. And no more than 20 can be run each month. TV ads cost $800. With a maximum of 7 available each month. Then there's an exposure column. Okay. Approximately 1,000 women will see each newspaper. 800 people will hear each radio. And 15,000 will see each TV ad. How much of each type should be used to maximize exposure? So I'm just setting it up. Maximize the exposure would be 1,000 for every newspaper, 800 for every radio, 15,000 for every TV. Notice we weren't really uh, given any sort of totals, were we? Yeah, we do. We have one total. It costs, they have $6,000 for advertising. So we do have a cost constraint. The cost constraint would be 20x1 plus 100x2 plus 800x3 <coughs> is less than or equal to 6000 then we have some other constraints as well. These here are the things that we don't really have a total for. We're just told that, <coughs> oh, pardon me, you can't have more than 10 newspaper ads. So X1 is less than or equal to 10. X2, less than or equal to 20. X3, less than or equal to 7. And we have the non-negativity constraints. X1, X2, X3 must be greater than or equal to zero. But you're not really going to punch that into uh, PHP Simplex or whatever website you're using for these. There. So there it is all set up. If you were going to do this by hand, there'd be one, two, three, four slack variables. It'd be a pretty big one. You set it up by hand. And this is oops. Now any questions? Just setting these up. Oh, how many more? Now at number twelve we've got okay, number thirteen. One gram of soybean meal provides at least 2.5 units of vitamins and 5 calories. One gram of meat byproducts provides 4.5 vitamins, 3 calories. One gram of grain provides 5 vitamins, 10 calories. If a gram of soybean meal costs 6 cents, the meat byproducts 8 and grain nine cents. What mixture of these three will provide at least 54 units of vitamins and 60 calories uh, per serving at minimum cost? What will be the minimum cost? This is a minimization problem and so you, we can't do it using the simplex method the way we've been doing it. The only thing I've shown you how to do is the simplex method for standard maximization. So on this problem here, any of the minimization, I am definitely assuming you find, go to some website to punch it in. Practice setting it up, then find one of those websites. Look at the one I suggested, phpsimplex.com, or look for some sort of app, okay? A lot of phones have apps, or there's a lot of phone apps for simplex method, believe it or not, at least in the Google Play Store, which is all, and they're free, so... Okay, so we need to know um, um, how many 
grams of the soybean meal, how many grams of the meat byproducts, how many grams of grain should go into this mixture here. So X1, number of grams of, the first thing we'll do is soybean, then X2, the meat by products and grain. Ooh, can y'all see that pink color? Let me raise this up a little. Well, there's going to be a vitamin column and a calorie column. Okay, soybean has 2.5 units of vitamins, 5 calories. The meat byproducts, 4.5 units of vitamins, 3 calories. Grain, 5 vitamins, 10 calories. 1 gram of grain. Oh, I've already seen that. If a gram of soybean now costs, uh, costs 6 cents. Eight cents, nine cents. Give y'all a chance to get caught up. I see some of you writing this stuff down. So we've got the six, eight, and nine. What mixture of these three ingredients will provide at least 54 units of vitamins. What does at least mean? At least 54. Does that mean 54 or fewer? Or does it mean 54 or more? At least means or more. Here's something I don't know if y'all have noticed. But at most means less than or equal to. And at least greater than or equal to. At least 54 means 54 or more. A lot of times people will get this mixed up. But if you stop and think about it, then you won't. At least 54 means 54 or more. Don't let the fact that least sound sort of like less than, okay? So we want to minimize when you're using php simplex make sure you're putting patching in minimize minimize 6x1 plus 8x2 plus 9x3 and then we have the vitamin constraint 2.5x1 plus 4.5x2 plus 5x3 greater than or equal to 54 the calorie constraint, 5x1 plus 3x2 plus 10x3, greater than or equal to 60. Of course, we have those non-negativity constraints that you're not going to actually patch in or do anything with them. And this is one where the minimization are the ones where you can't do by hand unless you're going to do some... Uh, learning on your own. Figure out how to do the simplex method with the minimization by hand. All I'm asking you to do is just find a website, patch it in. Again, the website that I use, php simplex.com slash en puts it in the English language. Okay? So I think it's in Spanish otherwise. Oh, I think. Where is it? Portuguese. Well, anyway, whatever language it is. If you want an English, put slashy in. And I have a couple of videos showing that website. It takes some practice setting these things up. But once you've mastered setting these up, oh wow, you can never, ever, ever say that you have trouble with word problems and math again. And you can say, I'm a, you're a master of word problems with math. And so, uh, semester's coming to a close, so work on this stuff. It's a long assignment. I think I even in this, this semester, I don't know when you'll be watching this, but this semester I even stuck in the name. Long assignment. 
so that people don't think, oh, I can do it in 30 minutes before the, right before it's due. So practice on this stuff and uh, I will be talking to you about another topic sometime soon. So bye-bye and thanks for listening.